Hello, everyone. Welcome to the very first episode of the Wire and Electronics podcast, where we discuss what's happening in your industry. I am your host, Jalen Barnes. Uh, a little bit about myself. I've been with Norfolk Wire, as many of you know, a distributor of everything from telecom to security products for a little over three years. And for most of that time, I've worked in inside sales. One thing I quickly realized is that when you work in this industry, there is a lot of information to learn. There's just no way around it. There are so many verticals to learn and nuances to learn in each one of them. I'm sure most of you agree that as we progress technologically in the industry, those lines start to blur between those categories as well. Uh, telecommunication, security, home automation, IT, AV. You can hardly do one without another. And even if you're not an installer or end user who does more than one thing, you're doing yourself a big disservice uh, if you're not at least knowledgeable about more than your sphere of activity. You know, you should learn something about one of those other categories, even if you're not actively involved in it. Um, so I developed this podcast to do two things, uh, to learn and to educate. I want to learn more myself uh, about this industry. That's been good to me these past three years. And I want to educate my listeners on topics uh, they want to know more about. It's my hope that each week you will learn something new, even if it's about something you're a professional in. So as we go along each week, I want you to send me questions about things we discuss on the podcast and things you want me to cover, different topics you want me to cover. Each week, I'm going to endeavor to interview a guest who is an expert in a particular field, uh, and they're going to offer their insight on new and exciting developments in the industry. Um, today, we're discussing the 4K revolution. Here's the thing about 4K and HDMI in general. It is a mess of misinformation, and people are so well misinformed, it's almost hard to convince them that they're wrong. It's so bad that rather than properly educate people, I believe that some, not all, some manufacturers and distributors just sort of lean into it. You know, you, you can find TV mounts that say 4K compatible. That should make you laugh out loud. There is no TV mount in existence that's going to affect the quality of your image uh, unless it's a badly made TV mount that drops your TV on the floor and uh, breaks the screen. Then it'll affect the image. But I, mean, I have customers who come up to my desk all the time, and, and, and they'll spend a, a, a good few minutes where we keep our uh, HDMI cables hanging, and, and they'll grab one, and they'll come over to me, and they'll say, is this a good quality cable? And I know what they mean. They want to know if it's going to give them the best image. And so when that happens, I have a decision to make. Am I going to take the five minutes to explain to them that this is a loaded question and they're actually kind of asking the wrong question, or do I just answer yes? And my response depends on how I'm feeling that day, honestly. Our guest today is a gentleman who is not misinformed about 4K and HDMI, and he has never led me astray on the topic. So I invited him on to help clear up some of the confusion. So without further delay, I want to introduce today's guest, Aaron Rosansky. Aaron is Director of Distribution Markets with Vanco International. How are you doing, Aaron? I'm doing well, Jalen. How about yourself? Doing all right. So uh, tell me, for the audience here, uh, uh, what exactly is Vanco and what do you do at Vanco? Uh, so Vanco is a manufacturer of uh, a variety of audio video accessories, uh, everything from HDMI cables, uh, audio video distribution products such as extenders, splitters, matrix units. Uh, we also get into categories such as networking accessories, uh, mounts, um, IR distribution, and a variety of other converters and connectors. Um, simply put, we're we're a uh, a solution. Uh, solution piece uh, manufacturer. Uh, so I'm a director of distribution markets. Uh, so we focus uh, sales directly through distribution. Uh, we do not sell direct. We value the distribution channel um, to sell our products through uh, as they sell it to the, the dealers and installers uh, throughout the country. And uh, I'm in charge of uh, um, the distribution channel itself. I want to talk about the definition of 4K, and that sounds like a simple question, but I'm going to tell you the people that I talk to, a lot of people don't even know how to properly define it. So help us out with that. How do you even define 4K in layman's terms? Absolutely. So 4K, simply put, is uh, four times the pixel count um, and, and twice the resolution of 1080p. So technically, it's 2160p. Um, due to some some marketing uh, and, and other factors, it, it simply the 4K kind of stuck um, more for uh, um, uh, you know marketing purposes. But uh, 
really it's 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 a higher pixel count and resolution, um, and it really takes um, the, the video to the next level. Uh, it, it results in a lifelike video image, um, as if you were viewing viewing it in person. And see, I'm glad you said that because the the question I want to ask is, does 4K matter right now? Oftentimes, when there's a new resolution, or really, and this goes in the industry, any new uh, standard or specification a lot of times there's no content to support it. And I think when 4K first came around, there wasn't a whole lot and people were going crazy hopping on it, but they didn't have anything supported. But how has that changed over the years? Does 4K matter now? Uh, absolutely, and, and you're, you're absolutely correct as well. Um, you know, when it first was, was released, there wasn't as much content. But um, today, it is readily available. Uh, we're actually in the midst of transitioning from 1080p uh, to more 4K uh, content. There's there's a lot more um, uh, sources available. Um, many major streaming uh, provide 4K content, um, and actual physical discs and uh, for Blu-ray. Um, any new product that you that you buy uh, is 4K ready. Um, a lot of the distributors across the country and many of the big box stores as well. Uh, you walk in there, you're gonna you're gonna find a, a 4K display. Uh, and 4K mm -hmm. sources to, to purchase. So 4K yep. is absolutely available and uh, 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 more, more than ever. How does that affect the install equipment? Because that becomes the question for an installer. That becomes the question for the end user. They want to know that when they turn on their TV and they're watching something that claims to be 4K, they're actually watching 4K. And um, there's a lot of misinformation about cables. But then once you start getting in depth a little more, then you got splitters to think about, you got extenders to think about. So help break that down for me. How does 4K change install equipment, and what links of the chain have to be 4K so that your image that you're watching with your physical eye is actually 4K? 4K changes uh, changes everything uh, in a setup. Um, not only does your source need to be able to support and provide 4K content, but everything from the, the active components to your cabling uh, all the way to your display need to be 4K ready. Uh, if any of those uh, components in that, in that line are not 4K ready, uh, it could result in a, uh, in a bottleneck uh, and it could result in a lower resolution that's being displayed. So um, that's, a, that's a big thing that we test here actually at Vanco is uh, we have a variety of 4K sources and 4K displays that uh, that will set up and and test our active products, test our cables, making sure that that everything in line is 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 supporting 4K um, and all the way to the display. Got you, got you. Now let me ask you this: uh, What about HDR? Because that's I believe one of the newest things that I've seen and that um, has really made a difference, especially when it comes to equipment. And I've seen a lot of it, but it, it's still fairly new, I suppose. Can you, can you talk a little bit about HDR? Absolutely. HDR, um, for those that, that don't know, it stands for High Dynamic Range, and it really brings another dynamic to 4K resolution, um, really enhances the, the, the viewing for the, uh, uh, for the customer. Uh, it, it results in a more vivid color, deeper black levels um, for, for a great looking picture. Uh, and just like your other 4K components, uh, with HDR, all of your active products, all of your cabling, all of your um, sources and, and displays need to be 4K ready uh, to support uh, uh, HDR uh, as well. So looking to the future, because when it comes to this, when it comes to HDMI, when it comes to TVs and displays and all this content, uh, this constant changes every year. So what do you see on the horizon? You know, as, as someone who's in the industry, maybe has your ear to the ground, what do you see coming? What do you think might be the next big thing that we should be looking out for? Well, HDMI 2.1 was recently announced, uh, and this is going to be the new spec that will bring on 4K capability. Or, sorry, excuse me, 8K capability. 8K, um, good lord. Yeah. 8K, <laughs> yes. So, uh, mm -hmm. uh, but but time will tell. Um, mm -hmm. However, I mean, you, you see 8K displays and contents uh, probably over the next few years, but we're we're still a ways away for that. Uh, but it, but it has been uh, shown at a, a variety of uh, trade shows. Uh, I mm -hmm. think recently as uh, at CES this past January, so uh, it, it is coming, and our um, you know we're we're seeing some some products that that we're testing already, but um, still very new 
um, but we'll definitely keep you posted. Gotcha, gotcha. Well, let me ask you this as a follow-up question to that when it comes to AK, because the question that everyone asked once 4K came out was, do we need to change our HDMI cables? And that was kind of a loaded question because the HDMI cables that existed before, and correct me if I'm wrong, they, it wasn't that they couldn't handle 4K, but they may not have been certified. So that became the question. But I did see a lot of um, some of the big box stores, you know, slapping 4K on a cable, and that was pretty much the same cable and charging, you know, a much higher premium for it that customers didn't really have to pay. But um, I'm interested to know if 8K, is that going to require a whole new, uh, that, that new specification, is that going to require a whole new cable that our current cables won't be able to handle? Uh, it, it absolutely could, um, and that's what we're, we're, we're currently testing um, right now is that could result in a whole new cabling uh, as well as introducing uh, fiber as well into the equation. If you don't mind, I, w I would like to touch on that a little bit. Fiber, um, matter of fact, I know Vanco has, you do guys do have a line of cables that uh, run over fiber, correct? Yes, it's a, it's an active optical cable. It's a it's a hybrid um, copper fiber cable uh, that starts mm -hmm. at 35 feet all the way up to 330 feet. Um, again, a directional cable, but it allows that uh, that transmission to to reach uh, up to 330 feet with no external power supplies needed. They actually get powered off wow. the uh, um, the source with the five volt. That's awesome. That's awesome. So how how have you seen fiber kind of come in and affect things? Do you think that's the direction to go or just is that mostly just for longer lengths, longer distances? For longer lengths and, and I'll tell you we, we're, we're definitely looking into that entire category. Uh, mm -hmm. For us it would be it would be something new that uh, we'd obviously be getting into um, but it, it, would, it would open up a whole new um, only rabbit hole that we'd be going down, <laughs> but yeah. uh, it's something that that is it, it's 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 on the horizon and, and approaching very quickly. Yeah. AV in general, HDMI specifically, 4K, 8K, and on and on and on. Um, this stuff is constantly changing; it's constantly growing. Um, but uh, you got to stay educated on it and stay ahead of it. Um, are there any products in particular that uh, we touched on a few that Van Coast got going right now that you think that my listeners should know about? Uh, absolutely. So, I mean, like I said, we have a, a variety of uh, of categories. But when it, when it comes to when it comes to 4K, um, we have our, our certified HDMI cable series. Now, these are mm -hmm. these are HDMI cables that are certified by HDMI. Uh, mm -hmm. Start at one foot up to 25 feet in length, and they are certified to support 18 gigabits per second. Uh, full 4K, 444, and HDR. Um, so those are yeah. definitely something when we talked that cabling is important uh, in your 4K setup. Uh, if, if you don't know about that about that series, definitely look at the uh, the certified series. And we also have a slim line as well for those um, yeah. those shorter lengths that you want more of a bend radius. Uh, and those start at a foot and a half up to eight feet in length. And those are also certified uh, by HDMI. And we also sell uh, a variety of, of active products such as uh, splitters, switchers, mm -hmm. and extenders that are 4K uh, HDR ready. Uh, so, you know, when it comes to the, the whole conversation, um, we want to be that, that one-stop uh, shop for, for your AV accessories uh, with, with 4K. Gotcha, and gotcha. besides and that, we have... Yeah. Uh, yeah, no. And besides okay. that, we we have a, a couple other components is, um, with a 4K audio extractor um, mm -hmm. and a 4K uh, clock stretcher as well for um, uh, syncing issues uh, with uh, with your 4K setup. Well, I'm going to include some of that in the uh, email. Uh, if, if, if you're listening, you signed up for my newsletter. Um, I'll include that as well um, in the email, so you'll get to look at some of those products. If you've got any questions, give me a call, and I can put you in touch with Aaron for anything that I can't answer myself even. Uh, so uh, I really appreciate having you on, Aaron. Um, thank you so much for your time, and uh, hopefully that has helped us out a little bit, uh, clearing up some of the misinformation when it comes to HDMI and 4K, and we learned a little bit today. Thanks for the time, and uh, again, if you have any questions, uh, feel free to reach out to uh, to Jalen or uh, or myself. Um, you can email me at uh, Aaron R at Vanco One dot com. Gotcha, and I'll include your information um, in that email as well, so you can uh, talk to Aaron directly. Um, the guy knows this stuff, so he'll be able to help you out. Appreciate your time, Aaron. 
Thank you. Thank you, everyone, for listening to today's podcast. I encourage you to share it. The more listeners I have, the more suggestions I can receive to cover relevant topics. If you are subscribed to my mailing list, I have included some information on Vanco products relevant to today's discussion. If you have any questions about those products or about this discussion in general, shoot me an email, and I'll be happy to help. And if I can't help, I'll bring in Aaron to help us both. And you can also contact him directly. I've included his information in the email as well. If you're not subscribed to my mailing list and would like to be, just shoot me an email to jalen.barnes at norfolkwire.com. You'll receive every podcast I produce in the Wire and Electronics newsletter I send out weekly. Thank you so much again for listening. Give me your feedback. Be blessed. And I'll be back next week to tell you more about what's happening in your industry. Thank you.